to the unchanging one, to him the anthem race, lift up your lips of
Jesus are coming. Clouds of heaven open, rain down fire. The glory is falling. A holy king, such a beautiful mystery. A holy king, such a beautiful mystery. Break open heaven, invade us with fire. The kingdom is coming. Your kingdom is coming, let your glory spread out through the breath of revival. Stirring righteous hearts to call upon your name. A hope is arising. Let your power dance on tongues of fire. Displaying your wonders. A holy king, such a beautiful mystery. A holy king, such a beautiful mystery. Your glory spread out like through the breath of revival. Break open heaven, made it with fire. The kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming. Let your glory spread out like through the breath of revival.
Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I, I, I got some good news. I, I've got some good news. If you've come looking for bad news, we don't have it here today. If you're looking for some bad news, you're in the wrong place. I'm going to say that again. If you're looking for bad news, we don't have it in this place. But I've got some good news. On the third day, he rose from the grave. I said he rose from the grave. We serve a living God, a resurrected king. His name is Jesus. And with him, all things are possible. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. If you believe that, shout yeah. We are not victims, but we are victors through Christ Jesus. Now, before you sit in the presence of the Lord here, find five people and say, everything's going to be all right. Amen. Everything's going to be all right. You're in the right place at the right time for the right thing. You're in the right place at the right time for the right thing. I said you're in the right place at the right time for the right thing. My, 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 my. Woo, the spirit of expectancy is in the house. Ah, the spirit of expectancy is in this place. And we know the spirit of expectancy is the breeding grounds for miracles. Amen? Expectancy, the anticipation of benefits to come. The anticipation of benefits to come. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, just, I'm going to move quickly here so we can get to our speaker this morning once again. Uh, uh, how about last night? Wasn't that awesome? I'm going to encourage everybody. If you weren't here, make sure you go on. on, on now, we got that on video. Right? Okay, so you guys go on to our webpage. You can, you can download and go to our, our, our media, the media section. And then you can go to, to last night's service and watch the whole thing in its entirety on video. It's recorded. I want to encourage you. Um, 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 you'll do well by doing that. Amen. Um, you, you, you'll be blessed and um, you'll be impacted. You'll be stirred and you'll be encouraged. So um, please uh, make yourselves available to that also. And um, real quick, next Saturday, next Saturday, I need the ushers and I want to get these. Let's just, let's, let's, let's. Let's, let's break these up and spread them all out. Um, next Saturday, we're starting off our illustrated sermon. Um, um, uh, first, we've never done this one before. It's called Checkmate. The end is just the beginning. Ooh. Um, um, it's, um, we're going we're gonna, to, we're gonna, we're gonna, um, um, it's, it's next Saturday at 7 o'clock. Um, so, so let's make sure that we get the word out. Let's invite people. If we do the possible, God will do the impossible. If we're going to see our harvest of souls come in, somebody's got to, you know, do the possible, amen. One plants, another waters, God brings the increase. One plants, another waters, God brings the increase. This is planting, planting and watering and also some prayer. So some of us can give out some flyers. Other, other, uh, others, we can be in prayer and intercession for, for, for the service on next Saturday. So, so uh, let's make sure we give these out to our uh, workplaces, um, through the drive through wherever the God leads. Amen. Just pray and, just, um, and make sure you put that in somebody's hand. Next Saturday, 7 p.m. Amen. Illustrated sermon. Never done this one before. It'll be a blessing. And also, not just to the unsaved, but even if you're saved, it will impact your life. This illustrated sermon is is, is gonna it, 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 it covers A all the way to Z. 
Not one person will walk out the same way they came in. Amen? So that's next Saturday. And also in the morning, we do have outreach. We're going to go out into the neighborhood also and invite um, uh, and go into areas uh, uh, within the city to invite people to the Saturday night service also. So outreach at 930 um, fellowship, coffee, donuts, and fellowship here in the fellowship hall at 930. And about 1030, we're going to go out. Last time we had a, 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 a outreach, I think it was like 80 or 90 people showed up. It was awesome. So God bless every one of you for your faithfulness and for responding last month. And um, so let's keep this, you know, let, let's, let's keep moving forward. Amen. That's not, you know, because the tendency is, well, well, that was good. Okay, then they got it covered. So somebody else, you know, will be, no, no. Then, then what happens is then we have half of what showed up. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. So let's keep going forward where much is given, much is required. Let's be faithful to the platform that God's given us. God is moving. Let's be faithful and um, continue to press in. All Look at your neighbor say, all hands on deck. So if you can't make it on Saturday morning, uh, for whatever the reason might be, please be in prayer for the group that does go out to get the word out, okay? So let's all be together in unity as we do the outreach leading into Saturday night service. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Also, what do I got here? Amen. All sorts of stuff going on. I, 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 looked, I looked at the barbecue over there, and I'm like, free barbecue. That was last week. Amen. Praise God. You missed it. Amen. Praise the Lord. I missed it. Amen. Uh, 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 in just a few minutes here, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to, uh, uh, Pastor Saeed's going to be behind this pulpit. The man of God is going to be um, sharing, teaching uh, uh, here in a few minutes in, in, in just a little bit. But I want to encourage everybody also to make yourselves available to the bookstore. We don't do this very often. So, you know, when I, when I say this, I mean, you know, please, the materials that are back there will impact your life. You know, so it's a green light. Go. Buy grab maybe some of you uh, uh maybe you know uh, uh you can you can be a blessing to somebody else amen um, um and i got a couple of, i just went in the back right now and, and just received three of them right now and a couple i actually have i have this prayer one the intimacy with god actually i have this one at home and it's excellent and then you also got touching heaven on your knees oh. let me say like this you know we're very we're very we're very high on theology but we're very low on neology all right, come on now. Don't look at me. Come on now. I mean, you, you, know, you know, that's, that's real. Oh, and this one, living in the fog, favor of God. Amen. So books, he's got CDs. His test, I think one of your CDs has got your testimony also, right? So you got CD. Please, 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 you guys, make yourselves available. He didn't ask me to do this. I'm, I'm, I just know oh, uh, uh, what he carries and how it's going to impact many lives. And together we make a difference. So, you know, it's not about, okay, our thing. No, no, no. We all come together, and he carries something that's going to impact many lives. So you guys, please make yourselves available. So uh, I, I, actually, I want to be a blessing right now. I just said, you know, hey, maybe you buy something and bless somebody else. Well, that's what I did this morning. I went and bought these books, and I want to bless somebody. Amen? Yeah. So I'm just interested in who, who wants the favor of uh, he, He's standing up. Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I like that. Amen. Um, uh, uh, touching heaven on your knees. Now, this is the one I actually, I actually have gone through, actually, and it's, you know, it's, it's going every day. It's an it's a intimacy with God. Um, pause and ponder and pray. And actually, I, I've actually gone through this. And, and, and it kind of gives, she's, stand, she's just standing right there. Praise God. God bless you. Oh, oh, you got it? All right. Praise God. God bless every one of you. Amen. So please make yourselves available. Let's, um, if I could do this now, are we, uh, are we good with the ushers? We're, we're, let's have the ushers come forward. Let's take the offering at this time also. Amen. And you guys, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your trust as we continue to move forward. Actually, we're about to, we're about to start outside where, you know, the, the, um, where the breakfast ministry is. We're about to fix a patio outside there. Amen. So we're, we're working on just kind of getting some things put together. So in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be in the process of more construction. Amen. I just need, you know, we need to do, I, I, you know, it's been a while. It's been a, about a month now, right? So we need to knock out something. We need to do something. Amen. We need to buy something. We need to build something. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Uh, uh, if you need an offering, Anvil, please raise your hand. And we'll get, there should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. But if you don't, um, um, just raise your hand and we'll get one out to you as quickly as possible. Amen. Praise God. You glad to be here this morning? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. Pastor John, would you come and pray, please? Are you excited to give? Yes. Amen. Our most precious Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just look forward to your word today, dear God. But 
Father, now we ask you to bless these offerings, dear God. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you made it possible for us to be together this morning, dear God. We ask your Holy Spirit just to move in a powerful way. We thank you and we ask you this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And again, you guys, please, please make sure, be faithful during the week, amen, to give out the flyer for the illustrated sermon next Saturday. And actually, we're going to run this three times. We're going to come back the following month, the following week on Tuesday and Saturday. And I'm believing with all my heart, and I know you're with me on this, our illustrated sermons have, we've, we've had some of the greatest harvest of souls during those illustrated sermons, but we're going to do three, we're going to do three, we're going to repeat the same one three times. And I'm believing within those three services, we're going to see the greatest harvest of souls of the history in three services we've ever seen. And we've had some great altar calls. Amen. And, um, but let's believe for more. And if we do our part, I believe God will do his part because that's what he says. Amen. Um, but let's, let's, let's get the word out to everybody. Amen. As we continue to worship the Lord for the next few minutes, remain seated until we finish the offering. And then we'll worship the Lord, prepare our hearts, and get ready for the word. Are you excited for the word this morning? No, no. Are you excited for the word this morning?
Put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah.
made straight your name to be glorified in Jesus name lift up your hands and say these words Jesus my heart is open to receive your holy word I give you permission to mess me up mess me up Jesus so I can mess up others for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Before you're seated, just one person and just say these, you're in the presence of God. I, I think that pretty much says it all right there. Thank you. Amen. Praise God. Guys, once again, I just as, as we're singing this last song, I was just like, I was just thinking of what God has done in the past and those past altars and the church here and what a God we serve. What an amazing God and what a privilege God has given us. What a privilege God has given us to, to, to be able to share the gospel with others. What a privilege. What a privilege. What a platform God's given us. I want to say thank you once again to everybody. You know, just all the servants in this house. You guys are unbelievable, really. Just every ministry, the commitment and the sacrifice is, is off the charts in this place. And I'm not just saying, I mean, that's real. Thank you. Uh, the barbecue, everybody in this church, you're, I still can't get over the, I mean, we've always had great, great response when we do outreaches and everything we've done. But I'm telling you, this last one, we still have, I said it the other day on Tuesday service, we still have so much overflow. But wait, but wait, wait. But isn't that what God said? That, that in famine and in difficulty, that we're going to excel and we're going to have increase in the church? When the economy is going one way, God's kingdom's going to... 
I mean, I, I walk, I, I mean, and, and all these different minutes, and, and just after the outreach, and there's so much overflow. And remember, we everybody got to eat as much as they wanted for free. And there's still leftovers, and now the children's ministry is getting blessed with, with chips and things like, dude, God bless you. And like I said the other day, I just need to say this, and God, you know, and some, I, I, I walk back there, thank you for, 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 for just for coming together with the assignment and the vision of this place in this area. Because what do we say? We, we, we can all do something. And that's, that's the important thing right there. We all need, the, you know, individually we're a voice, but corporately we're a force. We can do great things when we all come together. And like I said, I, I don't want to be average. Let, let's be great for God. Amen. Let, if we're, if we're going to do something, let's, let's, let's do it with excellence. Let's, let's be great for God. Let's be great for God. Let's do something great for God. Amen. For the glory of God. Look at somebody. Let's be great. Let's be great. Look at somebody. Say, Let's be great. But I, I walk in the back and I saw, and I said this, the other, I need to say it one more time. And I saw those individual cans of pop. Not the cases. Not the 12 packs. I said, some of us can do more than others, depending on where we're at. But we can all do something. We can all, it, 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 some of us can, you know, maybe can't, you know, because of the situation we're in right now. But you know what? Maybe not a case of pop or some chips. But we sure can get 50 cents somewhere and bring a can of pop. And I walked back there when this thing started and we were gathering everything. And I, and, it, and I see a couple of them still right now. And I see those individual cans of pop that people brought. That just, that just and you know, and it doesn't just touch my heart, but that, that wow, that touches the heart of God. God's going to bless you for that. You know, just start with where you're at and watch what God will do. And God's going to bless you for that. So God, with all my heart, God bless you. And, and, and we see the fruit as a byproduct of it. Amen. So let's keep on keeping on. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's go, go, go. Go, go, go. Look at your name and say, go, go, go. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, well today, once again, it's a privilege. It's an honor. He's my friend. Uh, uh, he's been a blessing in my life over the years, uh, an encouragement in my life, and a friend to this church and to this ministry over the years. Uh, uh, please help welcome, and he's, you guys are in for a blessing on this teaching here this morning. He's, I've said it earlier, I, go, I think he's one of the best with this topic, amen. Please help welcome with me, Pastor Saeed, amen. <laughs> Come on now. Let the man of God know that we're thankful for him. March Madness is in full force. Wow. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Thank you so much. Usually I don't get wrecked right up front. But I was sitting there. I'm wrecked already. <laughs> Pastor Gus, I must say, I mean this. I love you. I love you. I really love you. All that's happening around here the last few years, and I mentioned to you, the first church I ever preached at was your old location this is the first church I'm preaching at after being launched out there is significance to that and I've seen what God has done in this place and everything comes from the head down from the leadership this man practices what he preaches he lives what he preaches and I've seen it I, I'm, I am so proud of you Could we give, yes. Last night uh, was an amazing night for me because 
I received a lot of sons to me. A lot of you <laughs> became my sons. It was amazing to see how many sons and daughters, and daughters to my wife. Yes. We had daughters on this side, sons on this side. And it was so many beautiful to see how many people. All they want is affirmation that somebody loves them. And this place is a love machine. I think I should have a song or something. What was that? I'm just a love machine? No. That's what your pastor is. He's a love machine. And he's got a bunch of love machines that, he, that God has raised up around here. You guys truly are. And that breakfast this morning, I saw it. It wasn't just your continental breakfast. And it was something you get at a fine restaurant, at a fine resort. That was amazing. And the things that you guys are doing with what God has done, because you, the first place you had that little one, I remember preaching the first night, there wasn't any room. And it was about a quarter of this place, and it was packed. And I said, you need to get a bigger place. Because you already filled it out. And look what God has done. Last, you knocked this wall out. Every time I come, you've done something new. God is so pleased with you. And he's so pleased with you. Because you have locked into a vision of a man that practices what he preaches. He doesn't say, do as I say, do as I do. That's why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. That's what you guys are doing. You're doing as he does. You see, he has set the example. And I'm just, I can just preach about that all day today, but I'm not. But I just thank you. I've seen what God has done. So I want to say this to you. Joel 2.25 says, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has stolen. And he talks about Crawling, creeping, consuming, three types of worm. And we all have worms that are creeping around us. Crawling around, looking what they can consume. And then at the right time, they consume. But he said, I will restore to you. I will restore to you. So I want to say that to you about this and this people here. If you latch on to that scripture... Restoration season is upon you. Yeah. And he's going to restore to you. Restoration season is upon you. That wasn't part of my message at all. But God just changes everything. You know, I don't have notes. I don't work off of notes. Because then you're ch chained and tied to your notes. I like the Holy Spirit to just give me something fresh. And that's what he does. So... Thank you for allowing me to just free flow here today. I have, there's such a freedom in this place. There's a freedom. I have to also say, my dear friends, Don and Jerry Master, we love these guys. We love you. You're, you're just amazing. They have become such dear friends to us. We love you. And then your whole family, Pastor Gus, so many of you here, so many of you. And I introduced you. How many people were here last night? So I know. Okay, so... About half of you were not. So I want to introduce my wife, Cynthia. Would you stand up, please? She's my best friend, the love of my life, my partner in ministry. She's my own personal American Express. I don't leave home without her. So, and I see some of my, my dear friends, Ben and Nancy, over here. I love those guys. There are armor bearers. There are our left and right hand. And then some of you, Roxanne back there, she is my left, right hand, foot, and everything. So thank God for her. And I don't know if anybody else has come here. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you for allowing me to come here today and try to impart something to you. Today is St. Patrick's Day, by the way. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I try to wear green. This is the greenest thing I had. And some of you may not know this. It's going to come as a surprise to you. My middle name is Patrick. I just made that up. 
See, some of you believe anything. Now you can get up here and say anything. This St. Patrick, Day, I was doing a little reading about it. I was talking about this is the only day that during the Lent, you're, you can eat meat. And you're, you're supposed to have, you can, okay, it's okay to have meat during the 40 days. You can party, you can do whatever. So I just read a story about this, these two Catholic guys, they were neighbors. So one day this guy comes to his neighbor, he said, listen, I'm not a Catholic anymore, I'm a Baptist. He goes, really, how did that happen? He said, I went to the preacher, and the preacher sprinkled some water on me, water on me, he said, you were born Catholic, now I sprinkle you with water, now you are a Baptist. <laughs> so he goes, really, that easy? He said, yeah. So a few days later, the, it was during the Lent, the neighbor pulls up and he smells barbecue in the backyard of the neighbor, the Catholic neighbor. So he walks back there, he goes, wait a minute, this is Lent. You're, you're eating steaks. He pulls out a bottle of water, pour, sprinkles the steak. He goes, you were born a cow. I now baptize you, you are a fish. <laughs> That's just legalism. You can get by with anything according how you want to get around it, if that's what you want to do. So before we start, the presence of the Holy Spirit is already here in a magnificent way, but shall we just pray? Father, my Father, I thank you for your presence here. I thank you for all my brothers and sisters. I thank you for all that you brought here today to hear what you have to say to them, God. This is a new season. This is the beginning of, of a new season, beginning of spring, Easter, resurrection coming up. And Lord, that may be in the natural, but in the spirit, you're telling us that's happening in our lives as well. If we believe it, if we ask, believe, confess, and declare in our lives, we're going to see a new season of resurrection. The resurrection power come into our lives. So I pray you would do that today. Instill that resurrection hope and power in everyone who's listening. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor. Come and do only what you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, last night we talked mostly about my testimony. I won't get into that, but you know, the, the power of the Holy Spirit is what we want to talk about today. And you know, there's three things. Number three in the Bible repeats a lot. The Trinity, <clears throat> Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Number three repeats a lot. And there are three things that we as individuals want to know in everything, about everything. We want to know why. We want to know what, and we want to know how. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, we need to answer those three things. Why? Well, last night we addressed a bunch of that because also there's three things that I want to discuss. Three aspects of the Holy Spirit. The personal aspect, okay, biblical aspect, and the practical aspects. The why, what, and the how. Last night we address the personal aspect because the Holy Spirit is a person <clears throat> and in order to get to know him you must have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is not a power okay is not a power source is not an entity out there okay he's not a ghost running around he's a person that's why we must have our own personal relationship with him. That's why I addressed last night, I gave you my personal story, how I got saved through, through the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Now, biblical aspect, we want to talk about it a little bit. You know, there's some misunderstandings, misteachings about the Holy Spirit that people are kind of a little bit scared, hold them, off, hold them at an arm's length. A couple of things that come to mind quickly is the word Pentecost. You hear Pentecost, Pentecostal, you autom automatically think they handle snakes, they're crazy, okay? And they shake, they jump up and down, they make noise, they're weird, they're wacky. All these things, Pentecost, the word Pentecost scares people, okay? It shouldn't. What Pentecost simply means 50th. Penti means 
50. Costi means to the power. Means 50 to the power. 50th. What it means is 50 days after resurrection is that what happened on the day of Pentecost. That's all that means. So there's nothing scary about that, is there? If I just said 50. <laughs> Does that scare anybody? No. It didn't scare anybody. So Pentecost. Shouldn't scare anybody. The other thing that scares people is the word ghost or spirit. We talk about the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. People automatically think there's this ghost going to show up or the spirit is going to come that's going to take over our spirit. We're going to become, we won't be able to control our spirit. We're going to be, we're going to be talking in tongues and I'll be afraid that our spirit is going to just go crazy and we'll be in the middle of a mall or something or in a grocery store. All of a sudden we'll take the mic and we start going, no, no. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Okay? That's not going to happen. To understand that and not be afraid of the word ghost, let's see what it says in the, in the Greek. It's pneuma. Right? I've got to be careful when I, when I quote Greek around here because we've got Greek, Greeks here. I'm in the land of Greeks. <laughs> and in Hebrew is the word ruah. A better translator... Translation of that word is breath, wind, okay? Holy wind, holy breath. There's nothing scary or weird about that, okay? The word ruah in Hebrew is, a letter, is represented by the letter hash, H. You put your hand in front of your mouth and you go, that's the breath. You're making the sound, That means breath of God. It's breath of God. Think of the Holy Spirit as the breath of God. Not a ghost, not as a thing, not a power, but the breath of God. That's why when he, we changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham, he put an H in there. He came and <sighs> on Abram, and he became Abraham. Okay? He changed Ser, Sarai to Sarah. <sighs> And one way you can look at that is he removed the eye and he put himself in there, his breath. So that's what God does. He comes and removes self when the Holy Spirit comes. You become Holy Spirit driven, Holy Spirit possessed yet, but not in the way that you think you're possessed. He's not, you're not going to be possessed in a way where you can't control it. Because the spirit of the man is subject to the man. Okay? He's not going to overrule that. So don't think you're going to lose control of your spirit. Those are the misnomers about that. Now, the practical. I mean, how, it, it's good to talk about the personal, get other people's uh, testimony. It's good to get all the Bible teaching. There's a lot of Bible teaching. I can do a lot more, but we don't have time. I want to get to the practical part. What good is it to have somebody else's testimony, have all the Bible teachings, and it's not practical? So we've got to get down to the practical stuff, Okay. It's when you start reading the Bible, you're reading all, all the scriptures, reading all, all the things you want to know, it starts in your head. Because remember, the mind asks why. You ask why, the questions with your head. Okay? Why? And then it must start from here, from your head, move down to your heart. When you start sensing, when you start feeling, when you start feeling these things, it, start, it starts to take root in your heart. Now, Two things that turned me off about the Pentecostals, about the tongue talkers, before I got filled with the Spirit, were the Pentecostals themselves, or the tongue talkers. Why? Because two things. One, they were weird. They were legalistic. Because if you're doing it all from up here, book sense, you're trying to beat someone over the head with the Bible, trying to tell them, you know, biblical stuff from up here, they become very legalistic. And if you're all doing it with your heart, with your emotion, and you're being led by your emotions, by your feelings, you become weird. Okay? You become weird. And if you are... Uh, <laughs> and if you are both of those, then you are legalistically weird. <laughs> the double whammy. That's what turns people off. Listen, when it goes from your head down to your heart and you start feeling it, it must make it down to your spirit down here. 
Because once it makes it down in your spirit, in your innermost being, the Bible says that your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. I talked about that last night. Then the second mouth speaks, remember? And it produces power. Then you become what the Bible calls peculiar. There's a big difference. Some people think peculiar and weird are the same. They're not. They're not. Okay? Your pastor is peculiar. He's peculiar. Man, he's a peculiar guy. But you just go... Like, you, like the other pastor said last night, when he first time he saw you, he said, I don't know, man, there's something different about this. I see you have all these different nations represented at your church, black, white, all these different things. And I want to come and see what you're doing here. You're peculiar. Peculiar attracts. Weird repels. You don't want to be weird. You want to be peculiar. So, there is nothing weird, scary about Pentecost or about the ghost, right? So, this Holy Spirit, God said, is a, Jesus said, it is better for you that I go. They were trying to hold on to him and say, don't, don't go, stay. He said, no, 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 listen, it's better for you that I go because unless I go, then the Holy Spirit cannot come. He said, when I go, I will send you another helper. Okay, another helper. Now that word another also in the Greek, I'm not going to say what it is because I, I can't pronounce it. But it, it, it's, it means, when you say another, it means one, one, two different kinds of another. One another means of a different kind. Okay, that's where we get our, our word heterosexual. Hetera means they're different. And there's another one that means of the same kind. When he said, I'll send you another helper, he said, I'll send you another helper of the same kind that I am. It's me. It's just me, but in a different form. Okay? Same, he said, the same person that you see now, I'm going to send him. What's different about it is that it's going to be available to anyone. Anyone. See, we are more blessed today than the disciples were. Do you know that? Because the disciples at the time, they were limited to how much access they had to Jesus in the flesh. They were limited. But he said, now when I send you another helper, now we have access to him 24 hours a day. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Now, if I ask you, some of you theologians here, we got a lot of them. If I ask you, what were the last words of Jesus? What he said? Huh? What's that? <coughs> go. But most of you say go. Go into all the world, Matthew 28, and baptize them. And then, ugh, okay. I, I hate to mess your theology. Those were not his last words. Those words were spoken in the 40 days that he showed himself okay, to the disciples. But his very last words was in Luke 24, 49, and also in Acts 2, where he said, he didn't say go. Wait. He said wait. Why did he, why did he say, people are so anxious to go. Because Jesus said, go. Hey, I want to go. I'm going to go. But he said, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. That's my last word to you. Wait. Don't go yet. Wait. Wait for what? Wait for the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. Before he was lifted up, his last words was, wait in Jerusalem before you go. Folks, before you go, you need to wait on the Holy Ghost. And you need to receive the power before you go. Because if you go, then you're going in your own power. Most of the times you're going to fail. Most of the times you're going to mess up. But if you wait and let him show you what to do, let him fill you, let him receive that, then you go, you're going in his power. And guess what? He knows what he's sending you. He knows what's in store for you. That's why he said wait. Let me give you my power. Let me give you my Holy Spirit before you go. Now on the day of Pentecost, we read about it in the book of Acts. It talks about when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the place was shaken, and this wind came. Remember the mighty rushing wind? I said, that's the breath. Breath of God just blew. blew. He just blew in. Oh, you know what? Another, power, another property of the wind is that you can't see it, but it's powerful. 
It's powerful. And it goes where it wants to go. Okay? But it's, it doesn't just go anywhere. It had, there's laws. There's natural laws where it goes. Because that's how they, they can tell you three days before when the wind is coming and this is what it's going to do. This is the place where it's going to hit. Okay? Just because we can't see it, it goes where it wants to go. doesn't mean it's not governed by laws. It is governed by laws. Same way with the breath and power of the Holy Spirit. It's governed by His spiritual laws. Okay? He decides where it goes. He, depending on how we handle it, how you, how, when it's blown on you, what you do with it, how you handle it, he decides where it goes. And it is powerful, and you can't see it. That's why I said to you last night, uh, the kingdom of God is not of words. It's a power. It's a demonstration of the power. And when the wind of God comes and blows, it just demonstrates power. Things happen. You don't see it. You don't feel it. It's not about seeing, it's not about feeling, it's about knowing. You just know that you know that you know. When we were worshiping, you knew the presence of God was here. You didn't see anything. Yeah, our emotions were touched, but we can't be ruled by emotions. Because emotions lie. Emotions, if we go based on emotions, then we, we, sometimes we feel like praying, sometimes we don't. Sometimes we feel like going, sometimes we don't. Okay? You can't go on feelings. There's days that you start doing Put one foot in front of the other and the feeling comes. Listen, if, if I woke up this morning, I didn't feel like coming here this morning. I'll be honest with you. I didn't feel, most days I don't feel like getting out of bed, but I get out. Okay? I don't feel like getting on my knees and praying. There's been, not been one time that I jumped out of bed and I said, Woohoo, I'm going to get on my knees and I'm going to pray. No. I'm being honest with you. Okay? Opposite, I get up, I'm like, oh God, I don't feel, okay, thank you Jesus, I, I, I'm, I'm hurting, I, okay, but I know, I, God, I know this is where my power comes for me to go the rest of the day, I, need, I know I need to do this, so come, help me, help me Holy Spirit, empower me, give me my divine appointments today, I do it, and then when I get up, I feel better. Don't wait for the feeling to come, do it, and the feeling will come after that. So on the day of Pentecost, it came like a mighty rushing wind. Two things that we hear about that, we read about that. And it says, there was a fire that came down on each one of them over their heads. Think about, just imagine this. Each one of you have an individual fire over your head. Okay? Now one thing about that fire is, if I was in the room and I saw the fire, I could see the fire on your head, I could see the fire in your head, I could see it on yours. But for me to see my fire, every time I go like this, guess what? If it's over my head, it keeps moving. <laughs> I'm not able to see that fire. I'm able to see everybody else's. But for me to get up and say, I've got to see the fire to feel there's fire on me, to know about my fire, it's not going to happen. Therefore, what must I do? I must by faith trust there's a fire over my head. See, we can see the Holy Spirit on other people. We can see them with power of that. But for us to see it, we must do it by faith. For us to receive the power, the fire, the wind of the Holy Spirit, we must do it by faith. That's where the faith comes in. And there's not enough teaching in the world that's going to do that for you. At some point, you have to by faith say, okay, I've heard enough teaching, I've heard enough testimony. Now I want my own personal experience. A personal experience comes by your faith, by your faith saying, I'm just going to take a step saying, okay, I trust you, Holy Spirit. If that's for me, if that's what you have for me, then I want it. The Holy Spirit wants to do so much more in our lives. He's just looking for those who say, here I am. Here I am. You guys showing up this morning, you have told the Holy Spirit, I want more. I want more. There's more and I want more. All the stuff that has been done in the past, I want you right now to put it out of your head. Every teaching you had about the Holy Spirit, put it out of your head right now. Because some of it is legalistic, some of it is weird. And some of it is just, you've struggled with it. Yes, I understand. But give him one more chance today. Start with a clear slate. Okay? I gave you biblically, he said, wait. You need the power. 
for you to do what I want you to do, his disciples, you're going to need greater power. Okay? That's why he told them to wait. For you guys to overcome what you need to overcome, for you to experience that new season of restoration, for all the wonderful things that God wants to do, you're going to need a greater power. And he wants to give you that greater power. And that greater power is the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? There's only one prerequisite in receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's to receive Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior. That's the only prerequisite. Because I don't know all of you, we don't want to leave any room for doubt. That you walk out of here and the devil comes and says, well, you, you, know, you really weren't saved so you cannot uh, receive the Holy Spirit. So let's just take care of that right away, right quickly. Repeat after me quickly. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus come, into my heart. come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for saving me. I, accept that gift of grace. I accept that gift of grace. Help me to live for you. Help me do the things you want me to do. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it, that makes you eligible to receive this gift. Okay? Now, there's also another misunderstanding about baptism. Most people, when you read the Bible, most of us know only about one baptism. If I said the word baptism, only, you know, we, only, we only know one baptism. We only think about one baptism. Am I correct or not? And we think of the water baptism. But let me tell you, there's three baptisms in the Bible. Three baptisms. First baptism is the moment we get, we accept Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. That's our first baptism. That is baptism in Christ, where the Holy Spirit himself comes and takes you and baptizes you in Christ. Christ comes in you and you go in Christ. The word baptism, baptismal, means being enveloped, completely, completely enveloped. When you, Christ comes in you, he completely envelops you, and you go in Christ and Christ in you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's your first baptism, the moment of salvation. Then somewhere along the way, the Bible says, after that, you need to get water baptized. Now, water baptism, we get by a pastor or a leader, takes us, dips us under the water, takes us under the water, and it's a symbolism. Old man dies, a new man rises, we've heard that. Or it, it's a... Uh, uh, be telling the whole world that I'm the follower of Christ. You're announcing to the whole world that I'm not ashamed of Christ. Outward sign of what has taken place inside. Okay? Then comes the highest form of baptism, the third form of baptism. That's baptism in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Where Christ himself comes and takes you and baptizes you in his Holy Spirit. You get enveloped by his Holy Spirit and his Holy Spirit envelops you. That's the third form of baptism. Now the word baptism, baptismal, okay? The first part of it, bapto, means dipped. Okay? So that's why some people think when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, as mentioned to you last night, they go, oh, Sonny, I was filled with the Holy Spirit 20 years ago. I've been there. And I look at them and I go, really? It must have leaked out. Because nothing, I don't see any fruit, nothing. The word baptismo is not bapto. Bapto means dipped. Yeah, you got dipped. You got dipped in water, you came out. You got dipped in the Holy Spirit, that was it. But baptismo means completely being dipped, enveloped. The root word of that word is, all, is, is pickling. That means you remain in him. He remains in you. There's a difference between dipping and pickling. When you go to the restaurant, you dip your bread in something and you eat it. You just barely get some of it. But to get the pickle effect, it must remain in that juice. And it changes the property of the cucumber completely. Huh? You dip a cucumber and eat it, it's still a cucumber. Tastes like it, sounds like it, crunches like it, but it was dipped. But if you leave it in there long enough, that cucumber is soft, it's completely different. It becomes a pickle. To receive the power of the Holy Spirit and get effects of it, you must remain in the Holy Spirit. That's what that word says, be, be and feel. A word that says be filled with the Holy Spirit is a 
We don't even have a word for it in English. It's be being filled. That means you're constantly being filled. It's not something that you get filled and it's, it's over. Because once you get filled and you, you see it, you taste it, you see that he's good, you want more. He says, I got so much. I have so much more for you. Man, I got so much more. You have been limiting me because you have not been pickling in me. You come and dip in and out of the Holy Spirit once in a while when you need something. You come in and out. You, you come and you just dip in like you're taking a swim. And you go dry yourself. Jesus said, I'm coming back for my bride. Right? He didn't say, I'm coming back for my girlfriend. See, we want to date Christ. We don't want to be married to him. There's a big difference between dating and marriage. Huge commitment. I love that couple, your young couple last night. My goodness, that I was amazing. They are making a commitment. And they had thought about it, they had prayed about it, and it was a lifetime. And the way they spoke, I haven't heard young people speak like that. That was amazing. That comes from the wonderful leadership they have received here. But that was a different commitment. They didn't say, oh, we're dating. Because when you date someone, guess what? Something goes wrong, you say, I'll see you later. <laughs> we, we, are, we are done. But when you're married to someone, you put that ring on. Huh? <laughs> you're saying, we are married for life. Is there power in the ring? Is that ring what holds you together? It's just a symbol. So, is there power in baptism? Or is it a symbolism? Huh? Which one is it? Water baptism is a symbolism. It's like that ring. When you take, when you take, when you take Christ, when you accept Christ, and you do the water baptism, now you're putting on his ring. You're telling everybody, I'm married to Christ. Okay? But when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's, you are Pickled together now. It's it. You are married. Okay? You still have the ring on. But it's not the ring that's going to keep you together. It's just a symbol. There's a big difference between that. Some of you have been dating God for a while. It's time you get married. Yes. And when you say, I, I do... I accept you, I do. In the spirit, when you tell the Holy Spirit, I do. I'm married to you, we are married for life. And guess what? We are the bride, he's the bridegroom. In a marriage, the man is supposed to do all the hard work, isn't he? The man is supposed to provide. The man is supposed to labor. The man is supposed to take care of the wife. Isn't it? That's why he said, marry me and watch what I'll do. Watch what I'll do for you, my bride. Huh? And that's what he wants to do. First step was receiving Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior. Okay? And you did that. You did that. Next step is that you must believe the gift is for you. Do you believe the gift is for you? Yes. Obviously, because you're here. The next thing is much you must desire the gift. Do you desire the gift? Yes. You must desire it because he's not going to force you. It's a gift. It's a gift. If I want to give this to you, it's a gift. See, you must take it and receive it. It's only a gift. Until you receive it, then when you receive it, it becomes your gift. Now it's up to you. What are you going to do with that gift? Are you going to open it? Or are you going to leave it on the shelf? A lot of people receive some gifts, they leave it on the shelf. Because they, they think they know what's in it. Based on the last few gifts they received from that person, they know there's not going to be anything good in this, so they leave it on the shelf. But let me tell you, this gift that God wants to give to you after salvation is the greatest gift of all. He wants to give you this gift. The next thing is that you must ask for the gift with your own mouth. He's not going to force you. And the final thing is that you must do the speaking. We're going to go through that in a minute. Last night I talked to you about at the Wailing Wall. On the left side of the Wailing Wall, in Jerusalem, there were people that were standing and they had these Bibles about this big and this thick. And they were just talking back and forth, doing this, screaming and yelling. Remember on the left side in, the, in that? Uh, and I asked him, what, what's going on in there? He said, oh, they are debating. 
they are debating, they're challenging each other, they're learning, they learn by debating and challenging each other. That's how they were doing. Why? Because it was, it's all about word. It's all, they, were, they were taking the word and trying to prove it. But remember I told you last night, the kingdom of God is not about words. It's, not about, it's about power. Because words debate, words divide, words argue, but power demonstrates. Okay, power demonstrates. Jesus didn't argue or debate with anybody. He just showed up. He said, be healed. And you know, he did not try to explain theology. He didn't say, all right, everybody pay attention right now. I'm about to do a miracle. I want you to know, based on the, on the biblically, because I am the son of God, okay, I have the power to do it. And based on the biblical, based on the word of God, based on this, based on Romans chapter 12, he did, none of that. He didn't say any of that. He did not explain what he was doing. He did not debate anybody. He just did it. And he said wherever he went, these signs followed him. He healed everyone that was in his path. He didn't argue. He didn't debate. He demonstrated. On this side of the wailing wall, they were there. And on this side, there were the other people that were standing in front of the wailing wall. Praying with their eyes closed. Some of you have seen that. They were lost. It was one on one with God. It didn't matter how many people were around them. They were praying. I asked somebody, what is, what is that? Said, that is called devening. That word is called devening. I go, what is that? They're so lost. Well, that symbolizes is a flame burning they were burning everything in them was burning for God it looked like a flame that was burning they went over there debating they were just burning for God they were praying for God that's why a lot of people you see when they're praying they rock back and forth like this Jesus wants you to burn for him once that power gets in you, once that power gets in you, you start burning for him. Luke 24, 32, Jesus was walking with his disciples on the road to Emmaus. And he was, they, were, they were talking, they were debating with Jesus. And Jesus looks at them, he says, you know, all the stuff you guys are talking about, all these scriptures that you're talking about, he said, all of that is, was pointing to me. He said, you're talking about the Messiah, you're talking about all these things, all of that is pointing to me. They go, huh? All of a sudden, they realized he was gone. They realized who he was, that it was him. And this is what they said. He said, did not our hearts burn like fire as he opened our eyes to the scripture? See, they've been reading those scriptures. It was up here. He said, all of a sudden, did not our hearts burn like fire? Fire, when he opened our eyes to the scriptures, what we've been reading, we have not been understanding. Look at that. That's the flame. God wants his word to get so deep in you. And he wants to reveal what that is to you. Because unless he opens up your eyes to the scriptures, you're not going to understand it. To the unsaved, the scriptures, all they are is a book of history. To the saved, without the power of the Holy Spirit, this book is a book of mystery. But when you get saved, you get full, filled with the Holy Spirit. That goes from history to mystery to destiny. Yeah. This book has your destiny in it. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit to come and enlighten your spirit. So you can read what the destiny that God has for you in this book. Unless you do that, you're reading a history book. Or you're reading big mysteries. The Bible says, uh, call unto me and I will show you great and mighty things. Jeremiah 33.3 I will show you hidden. One translation says, I will show you the fenced in things. The hidden things. You know there are things in the word of God that are fenced in. Average person can read it means nothing. But the one who's been pickled in the Holy Spirit can pick it up and read it and go, hmm, yeah, hmm, wow. That's what it means. Because the pickling agent just talked to you. Huh? 
and you've been, you've been pickled long enough to know his voice, his sound. Revelations that come. So now, you met the prerequisite. You believe it's for you. You desire the gift. Now, next thing is, you must ask for it with your own mouth. Right now. Would you just close your eyes, and if you truly want to receive baptism in the Holy Spirit, just say it with your own mouth. Jesus, baptize me now in your Holy Spirit. Here's the final step. Here's the final, very final step. This is where the deal is closed. You know, those of you who've been salesmen, you can, you can do, you can be the greatest salesman in the world and do all this stuff, but at some point you must ask a question. Would you like to sign the deal? You've got to do a close. This is the closing part. This is where the rubber meets the road. All you heard, all I've said means nothing unless you close the deal. It was just interesting talk you heard. That's all it was. But here's the moment. You must do the speaking. God is not going to force you to do the speaking. You must do it willingly. Why is it important to do the speaking? Why is it important to do it out loud? For three reasons. Okay. First reason is that when you do it out loud, you're telling God that I finally gave my faith over to you. By faith, I accept it. I didn't see the flame. But by faith, I believe there's going to flame appear on over top of my head when I do this. And I'm going to speak it. He hears it. The devil also hears it. And he says, man, I lost another one. I won't be able to lie to them anymore. I will not be able to tell them how terrible they are and how unworthy they are and all that. I won't be able to remind them of the past. That's why he wants to keep your mouth shut. Okay? Because he wants you to walk out of here saying, oh, yeah, that was a, it's not for you. Oh, good. I'm glad you didn't do it. Let me talk to you. I'll tell you. I'll show you. I have plans for your life too. <laughs> Just like God has plans for your life, he has plans for your life. John 10.10 10 tells you the difference of the two of them. He wants to give life, wants to destroy you. You decide. So God hears it. The devil hears it. Now guess what? What happens when you speak it out? It goes right back in your own ear and you hear it. And you finally believe that what has taken place has actually happened. Nobody's going to be able to lie to you anymore. One last thing. Tongues. Let's not get hung up on tongues. Tongues is only a an evidence. It's not the evidence. Some people say it's the evidence. Unless you speak in tongues, you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that. The big evidence is a changed life. Tongues is our, for our personal edification. Most of the time, Jude 18, Jude 20, it says, edify yourself in the Holy Ghost. How many of us need more edification? So it's for our benefit. The gift of tongues is for our benefit. There's a difference between grace of tongues, which is power of speaking in prayer language, and the gift of tongues, which is tongues for the whole church. That is God speaking to us through somebody. The gift of tongues. Prayer tongues is us speaking to God. There is the due difference, okay? Make sure you understand those two differences. They're not one and the same. The gift of tongues, which God uses, who he chooses, who he moves upon to give a message for the church. And it follows by interpretation, and it edifies you, and it lifts you up. God chooses who he does that to. But the gift of tongues as a prayer language, he wants to give to everybody. Only one prerequisite, receive Christ in your heart as Lord and Savior. Do I have to be baptized in water before I, I receive the Holy Spirit? No, no, no. It doesn't say anywhere in there you have to be baptized first. Why? Because you read in, in Acts, Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you've been saved? He said, no, he didn't even know about it. He said, okay, be filled with the Holy Spirit. He didn't say, wait a minute, go dip yourself in water and then come out so you can be filled with the Spirit. No, no, no. They got baptized later in water. Okay? And let me tell you, just because you're going to speak in tongues, prayer language, doesn't mean you are a Pentecostal. That's a man-made word. Pentecost, it's a label. Okay? Just like if that's the case, then John was a Baptist. Because he was John the Baptist. <laughs> that's a label. There are Catholics that pray in tongues. There are Baptists that pray in tongues. And I have news for you. There's going to be a lot more Catholics praying in tongues here real soon because of the new pope that was selected. Yeah, he's a charismatic pope. Sideline, sorry. 
Closing time. Do you want this power? You've heard enough word. You've heard enough teaching. You've heard enough convincing. You've heard enough debating. Whatever you want to call it. Here's the point now. Do you want to speak in tongues, receive the power, the heavenly language? When you pray in tongues, it's your spirit speaking. Your mind is, is silent. It's not active. It's your spirit that's active. So right now, I want you to do a mind bypass. You've heard of the heart bypass. Do a mind bypass. Turn your mind off. Tell your mind to be quiet. Silence your mind. Because your mind is going to talk to you right now, and it's the devil. I'll tell you that right now. The devil can put thoughts in your mind. But the only one that can read your mind is God. The devil cannot read your mind. God can read your mind and he knows what's in your heart right now. So in your mind, if you're talking to God, and if you tell him you really want it, and he knows what's in your heart that you truly want it, he's going to give you that gift. Because he said, if your earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much would the Father, Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? He wants to give you his Holy Spirit right now. So by faith right now, open your mouth and start speaking. Out of your innermost being, the Bible says, will flow rivers of living water. That living water is the Holy Spirit. It's all been inside you. The moment you received Christ, He deposited a portion of His Spirit in you. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 says, We have this treasure in this earthen vessel, that the excellency and the power may be of God and not of ours. That treasure that He's talking about was the Holy Spirit that was deposited in you. Those of you who have been saved for a while, do you, know, did you, do you know that you've been walking around carrying a treasure? Getting baptized in the Holy Spirit will give you the ability to tap into that treasure. We all have that treasure in you. You need to know now. You need to, by faith, tap into that treasure. Give you the ability. That word power doesn't mean physical power. It means ability to do. Ability to fight the devil. Ability to... Overcome what you tried to overcome all your life. Because now there's a greater power that's going to operate in you. And it's power of the Holy Spirit. It's no longer you that's going to fight the devil. It's going to be the Holy Spirit within you. Power to overcome. How many like to have power? Okay, let me explain the power before you volunteer for it. Now, what power? He said, I'll give you the power to be my, what? Witnesses. He didn't say, I give you the power to go witness. Anybody can witness. Okay, that's one is words. So I give you the power to be witnesses. That means your life is going to witness of me. Amen. I give you the power to be my witnesses. Amen. That word witness in Greek is the word matros. He says, I, that means martyr. He said, I give you the power to become martyrs for me. How many still want the power? <clears throat> Huh? He said, I'll give you the power to be like me. I'll give you the power to go wash somebody's feet. I'll give you the power when they hang you on the cross, you can pray for them, say forgive them. i give you the power when they spit on you, you don't spit back. That's the kind of power he wants to give to you. And that's a supernatural power. That's not a natural power. Because when somebody spits on you, you want to spit on them. Somebody hurts you, you want to hurt them. Somebody... You, what do you mean pray for my enemies? Yeah, he said, I'll give you the power to pray for your enemies. When you are able to pray for your enemies, that means you have reached the point of an intercessor. You have reached the point. He wants to give you that power now. Right now, while nobody's looking. If you want to receive that power right now, just signify by raising your hand and put it back down. Oh, there's a lot of, my gosh, there's a lot of you. There's, a, there's too many of you for us to, and pl listen, you don't need a man to lay hands on you. It's not, I don't have any power to give you, okay? He himself wants to give you that power. And he'll do it right where you are, by faith. Say, I want that fire over my head. I want that wind to come blow in me. There's something resonating inside you. There's a word, there's a syllable, something. The Bible says you'll speak with unknown tongues. I'm having people who say, well, I don't understand my tongues. Hello, you're not supposed to. That's why he said unknown tongues. <laughs> you were supposed to understand it. He would say known tongues. Or some would say, do I have to speak in tongues? No. You get to. It's a bonus. You get to. 
Do I have to? No, you get to. So if you want it right now, start speaking. By faith, open your mouth. Let that faucet, your mouth is the key. Your mouth is the faucet that's going to turn that living water that's going to come out. At any time you have control to shut the faucet or turn it back on. By faith, open your mouth, start speaking. There's nothing weird, there's nothing wacky about it. And for the love of God, don't get weird and wacky. Because you're not going to attract people. Become peculiar. Become peculiar. Let this be a peculiar church. Let this be a church where you walk around, you do your outreaches. People say, there's so much love in these people. They are so peculiar. I don't know what it is about them, but I want to be next to them. I want to attend their church. I want to be like them. I want to be around them. Open your mouth, start speaking. Let's have a, let's have a Holy Ghost move right now. By faith, start speaking. And some people have said, what words do I say? Listen, I, don't, I can't tell you what words to say. The Bible says the Holy Spirit himself will give you the utterance. Don't let man tell you what to say. Because then you're repeating man's word. Oh, there's a fresh power. There's a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit blowing over this place. There's a fresh fire. Oh, the living water. The living water. It's flown out of you. Drink of that living water. Drink of it. Taste. Taste and see that he's good. Now some of you are not going to be the same after today. You're not going to be the same. You're going to understand the word of God like never before. You're going to soak it like never before. You're going to have desires that you didn't even know you had. Your desires are going to shift. They're going to shift from worldly desires to godly desires. Because something has come alive in you. There's a new season, season of restoration coming. Oh, folks, on the, on the Friday when they put Jesus in the tomb, they thought he was done. They didn't know three days later something was going to happen. They didn't know the power was going to come to the world. They didn't know that they had just leashed the greatest power upon the world. That power has been unleashed in your life. And guess what? The Good Friday is coming. Good Friday. Good Friday. Was, what, who was it good for? It was not good for Jesus. It was good for us. He did it for us. Because he knew three days later he was going to give you the greatest gift. <clears throat> and the resurrection season is upon us. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you've done here this morning. Lord, that this is just the beginning of the restoration season for individuals, for families, for ministries, for churches, for businesses. Restoration season, God. Lord, the beginning of a new season signals the end of another season. The winter is over. The spring is coming. Life is springing up. The resurrection power is coming. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you for what you have done. I pray, Lord, as, as every individual leaves here today, they would know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they've had a visitation with you face to face. That, Father, as they open their Bible, they would realize that you're speaking to them because that living word has now become alive. And as they read the Bible, Lord, now the Bible is going to read them, yes. read their life. And it's going to tell them about a story about their future, about a story about their destiny, God. This is not an end. This is just the beginning, Lord. This is not a one-time experience. I pray, Lord, there would be such a hunger in them for more of you that they will not be able to get enough. And we thank you for what you started here. Continue 
continue to help them to grow. And Father, we give you praise, glory, and honor. The restoration season that's coming. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much. Come on now, that was good. That's one of those topics in the church today. I'm telling you, that's... I think one of the best teachers on this topic, Pastor Saeed. I believe that with all my heart. Wasn't that awesome? Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. You can remain standing. We're going we're gonna to dismiss here. We're going we're gonna to sing a, a closing song here. Uh, 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 I want to encourage you once again. Uh, um, um, when the CDs are available from this message also, we're going to have them available here coming up um, in the upcoming service. And also, again, go on the webpage because today's service also will be on... When, is, when this one will be on how like on YouTube when like a, a couple days from now or, or a day so what in about within a day about a day about 24 hours from now you'll be able to go from we'll have the recording of what just got recorded what, what what you just heard right now in about a day you can go to the web page go to the media part of it and you can go on YouTube and watch this service in its entirety this is one of those this is one of those this is one you go back and you listen to it again what a great teaching amen what a great teaching let them know how much we appreciate them this weekend for coming and being a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Amen. Remember, Illustrated Sermon, Saturday night. Don't forget Saturday morning outreach. I'll be back here also on Sunday morning. By the grace of God, I'll be behind the pulpit on Sunday morning service. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you glad you came this morning? Praise God. As we sing this song. You are dismissed in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Spirit rain down. Rain down. Oh, comforter and friend. How we need your touch again. Holy Spirit rain.